Well, it's Jess from Sunflower Dairy. I'm out here by the garden, so it's time to give you all a garden tour again. So if you've never been here before, we're in zone 5B, 6A. We try to give you all a garden tour every week to show you what we're growing, what we're harvesting, what we're planting, and all of that. Just to give you an idea for your growing zone, what you should be doing in your growing zone compared to what we're doing. Now, all growing zones are different, so you know, maybe what we're doing here, what you're doing in your growing zone, if you're in a different growing zone, you know, it might be time to do something else. But if you're in the same growing zone or close to the same growing zone, it's going to be a pretty comparable. So without further ado, give you all a garden tour. So as you all can see here, the string beans, they're vining like crazy. And there's actually a few that are about ready. So as you all can see, the peas here, they're about done. They're dying back and they're starting to go to seed. But these have honestly done awesome. They have been producing like crazy. There's still quite a few good peas on here. But a lot of them, they're pretty much, you know, they're starting to go to seed. Like this one here, you can tell that's starting to go to seed compared to that one. But these have done great. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be pulling all of these out and then I'm going to be replanting literally in the next couple days. So that will give me enough time to be able to get another harvest before our cold front. So, you know, this is going to last, you know, the peas on here, they're going to last a couple more days, but as soon as these are done, then I'm going to go ahead and pull these out and plant more so I can get another harvest before a freeze. Some of these sunflowers are going to be massive. They're already massive. And this one, as you can see, it's already, it, it's got to be nine foot already. And There's not even a flower up there yet, so this thing is probably going to go a few more feet, maybe more. So that's going to be a massive sunflower. And this is one of the mammoth sunflowers, so this is going to have a giant sunflower on it. So as you all might have seen earlier this week, I harvested potatoes out of this raised bed. Well, so all the potatoes are harvested and I replanted this with all different varieties, purple, blue, red, all kinds of potatoes. So I should have enough time before our freezes fall to get another round of potatoes. So I will keep you all updated and let you know if this works out. So right now is the time where we're starting to transition from you know earlier season crops and now we're pretty much midsummer. So we're starting to do, you know, we're starting to go to different crops, like mainly right now we're in mainly summer crops. So what I'm going to be doing is pulling out a lot of the spring crops, like this right here is lettuce that is bolting. So I will keep quite a bit of this lettuce just to let it reseed because last year I left quite a few lettuce plants and let them reseed and this year I had tons and tons of lettuce everywhere just from it reseeding so I didn't have to plant any lettuce this spring and the lettuce was great and that's just because it reseeded itself so the plant knows when it wants to grow so that's going to be better for the plant in the long run because it knows when it wants to grow. Unlike if I plant something and it doesn't want to grow or if it's not the right timing, you know, it's not gonna work out. But a lot of times if you let stuff reseed, it's gonna grow 
when it's supposed to grow and it's gonna do a lot better. Just like, you know, if you see volunteers in your garden, they usually seem to be a lot better of a plant and stronger because they're growing when they want to grow. There's quite a few tomatoes over here in the kitchen garden. All different sizes, medium tomatoes, big slicer tomatoes. There's even cherry tomatoes in here, but it's looking like we're gonna have a pretty good tomato harvest over here in the kitchen garden. Alright, all, I'm about done over here in the kitchen garden showing you everything over here. So let's head over to the second production garden. Alright, over here in the second garden, the production garden, we are looking at tons of tomatoes over here. And when I say tons of tomatoes, I mean there's lots of tomatoes everywhere. And also, looks like we're going to have a pretty good harvest of peppers over here on this side so everything's looking pretty good over here check out these cabbages these are getting crazy big over here a little bit of cabbage worm damage here in the center cabbages which are green cabbages which are the cabbage moths favorite but the purple cabbages are looking pretty good and the green cabbages aren't as bad as usual so the purple cabbages are detouring the cabbage moth so this is working and these are looking great all right all I think I just found something super exciting I think I just found our first ripe tomatoes of the season let me check this out Check them out. This is super exciting. This is a cherry heart variety. This is exciting. Lots more tomatoes on the way. So it also looks like I just found our first peppers of the season. So this is a really exciting day. Check out the first of the banana peppers. All right, usually the banana peppers are first to produce and they are not letting me down this year. This is exciting. Lots of fried and pickled peppers. I'm excited about. All right, so this is definitely a harvesting day. So I just found some ground cherries, which if you don't know what a ground cherry is, I'm about to show you, so. So a ground cherry, it looks like it looks like a little husk. And inside it kind of looks like a cherry or a little tomato. So and they fall on the ground, so that's why they're called a ground cherry. But a lot of people will just eat these or I've heard of some people making jam or jellies out of these or I've heard of people making pies out of these or I've also heard of people dipping these in chocolate. So there's a lot of things that you can do with these fun little, fun little things. Alright, do you all remember my experiment of the fall tomatoes? They are actually looking pretty good. I'm pretty happy with how well these are doing. I actually I'm starting to see some tomato flowers on here and these plants they've grown a good bit so I'm pretty happy with these. I'm really thinking I'm gonna actually get some tomatoes before fall so that's pretty good.
All right, all, let's head over to the in-ground garden. So as you all can see, there is squash growing everywhere on this garden fabric. And there's actually little baby squashes on quite a few of these plants. Let me see if I can show you all some. There's a little baby squash. There's quite a few little baby squash on this plant. There's probably six or so on this plant. That one's gonna be pretty cool. That's a gonna be like a scallop green patty pan squash. That's gonna be pretty neat. So here's some good sized sweet corn and there's several rows of this sweet corn. All different varieties, but it's looking pretty good. It's about knee high, so we're doing pretty good. Knee high in July, that's what you're usually looking for. Check out some of this wheat. So I'm gonna be grinding this wheat in the flour and there's two big rows of this, so that's pretty exciting. Let's check out what's growing in the mini tunnel. So as you all probably remember, we planted watermelons in here. Well, just check out these watermelon vines. Crazy, and all the other melons, they're doing pretty good too. But remember when I was telling you all that the melons are probably gonna start going up this trellis? Well, look at this. That's gonna be pretty cool, having those melons. Find up that trellis. All right, let's head over to the cut flower garden. Do you all remember these cut flowers just a few days ago? Look at how massive some of these are. These are getting crazy tall. So there's sunflowers in here, there's zinnias in here, there's straw flower in here, there's status in here, amaranth in here, celosia in here, there's a few tall marigolds in here, and so many other cut flowers, and this is going to be really crazy beautiful, and it's so exciting how crazy these are all growing. <music> all over here in another cut flower bed I wanted to show you all this bee balm because I actually grew this bee balm from seed last year and this bee balm is so tall it's almost taller than me but the pollinators love it and I grew this from seed and this is like a wild, wild bee balm variety or wild bergamot variety but it's really beautiful the bees and pollinators just love it and it's growing like crazy this year. Check out all this echinacea. So this is another part of one of the cut flower beds and this echinacea, all the butterflies and hummingbirds and all the pollinators just love this and this is a beautiful cut flower or some people will also use echinacea for echinacea tea. So echinacea has so many wonderful benefits. Look at all these gladiolas. And actually some of these gladiolas are starting to send up their flowers. Can you see that there? Right there. That's one of the gladiola flowers getting ready to bloom. So another cool cut flower is actually dill so yes you use dill for pickling and all that but this dill is a special kind of dill it's called boquette dill or bouquet dill or cut flower dill so this dill is a bit bigger than your regular size dill just look at the size of this this one flower it's the same size as my face Check that out. That is some big deal. And um, 
six taller than me. So that's some crazy deal. But this would be really beautiful and cut flowers as well. Let's head inside of the big greenhouse eye tunnel and check out what's growing in that raised garden bed. All right, so this raised garden bed inside the high tunnel greenhouse is growing super crazy so of course the heat and humidity stays inside of greenhouses so the plants are going to grow much quicker and faster and things are just going to grow like crazy but as you can see all these eggplant plants they're getting pretty big there's eggplants on them which i will show you and then there's tomato plants behind me there's pepper plants cucumelons all kinds of things so i'll go ahead and show you kind of what's grown in this raised garden bed. So these eggplants, there's eggplant all over these. So there's a little one here. There's another one over here. That one's actually getting a good size. There's some more little baby ones over there. There's some more over there. And then there's also all kinds of tomatoes. So. There's tomatoes over there. There's tomatoes here. And over here, there's tomatoes. More tomatoes here. And there's some more tomatoes here. So check out these cucumella vines. They are growing all over this trellis in this garden bed in the greenhouse. And I actually thought that I saw a cucumelon somewhere. There it is. Cucumelon. So if you don't know what a cucumelon is, a cucumelon is a cross between a cucumber and a melon, which makes mini melons that taste like a cucumber so pretty cool there's also a few artichokes in this garden bed in the greenhouse as well and check out all of these pepper plants so all of these pepper plants in here are way bigger than any of my pepper plants outside I don't quite see any peppers yet maybe a few Little baby peppers, but nothing that's ready to harvest because these plants are focusing on growing right now, which is great because I want my pepper plants to grow to a pretty decent size before they actually start producing peppers. So I'm pretty happy with how these are doing in the greenhouse. As you all can see over here by our sign, we have all kinds of cup flowers and borage and bachelor buttons. There's a whole bunch of zinnias in here, cosmos in here, and straw flowers. Here's a straw flower mixed in here. You can see that over the whole sea of borage flowers. So, but there's all kinds of cup flowers in here, and they're looking beautiful. All the butterflies and hummingbirds and all the pollinators are just loving these so this whole space is looking really beautiful and we have been having a drought and yesterday we just had a downpour of rain so everything in all the gardens is going to start growing like crazy because it's almost been a month since we've had any rain so the garden is about to go crazy. All right, all, thank you for coming on this garden tour with me. Thanks for harvesting some veggies. That was pretty fun to be able to harvest on this garden tour today. All right, all, make sure you keep an eye out for more garden tours. We try to do a garden tour every week to keep you updated on what's going on in our garden so you kind of have an idea of what should kind of be going on in your garden. So of course, our growing zone is 5B, 6A. So depending on your growing zone, that's gonna depend on what's going on in your garden compared to our garden. All right, all, thank you for watching. Have a blessed day.